Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. The time 840 over on the East Coast and 540 on the West Coast. It's the video that began circulating all over social media just minutes after the cargo ship slammed into the key bridge there in Baltimore, causing the bridge to fall into the water below. Sadly, we know that six construction workers on the bridge at the time were believed to be killed. Two of their bodies have been recovered as crews search for the remaining four victims. Now, Mike Singer is the owner of Baltimore and Chesa Chesapeake Bay ship watchers. He helped to set up the cameras that captured that now viral video of the collapse. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us this morning. You're welcome. My first question for you, just tell me how you found out what happened and what you were thinking when you did see that video. Uh, my phone was going crazy. <laughs> so about 4 a.m. and I roll over and I pick up my phone. I tried to ignore it normally, but um, something told me to pick it up. And I've got these people from on the other side of the world trying to contact me through Instagram. What? What in the world is that? And then I saw a message from one of my admins who is actually a captain um, in he here in Baltimore Harbor. And uh, she said the key bridge is gone. And when you look at that video, I, I can tell you definitely become emotional there and that's been kind of the the thought for just about everyone we have seen folks who have seen that bridge forever they work very closely to it and it's just an emotional situation i can't even begin begin to imagine and when you see that video now all these hours later what what goes through your mind it's 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 just surreal it's um you know the iconic part of our city right it's it's associated with who we are and it has been for almost 50 years so to see it gone is just it's it's surreal i when i go out um to where i can see it and you just stand there and look at it it it's it's still shocking it's still unbelievable you still you still can't you're still trying to process even though your eyes are showing it your brain is still having trouble does the video itself really capture the severity of the situation because you see it happen again that is the video that is circulated all over social media but then you have people who take their boats out there they get close to it and say the video doesn't even begin to capture what we're looking at mm. well I, I think it does. I mean, we, well, we all have opinions. I think it does, but uh, I, I took a uh, news crew out on a boat yesterday. And so when you're out there, completely different feeling. It's, it's one to see it on video. It's one to stand there and see it gone. It's another one to be within a half mile on the water and see it and see that up close. For people who aren't necessarily familiar with the Key Bridge, we know it is a major landmark, so to speak. A lot of people travel, thousands upon thousands of people, on it. So tell me about the Key Bridge. Well, um, the Baltimore Beltway was never completed until the Key Bridge went up. So we had the Harbor Tunnel that was built in the 50s. We had that I-95 tunnel that was opened in early 80s, I think it was. And so, um, but the beltway wasn't a circle until this bridge was complete. And it, and it was the largest truss, um, truss structure of that design at the time when it was built. Tell me about the Baltimore and Chesapeake Bay ship watchers and how it, it all got started and came together. Uh, my wife and I moved to a place in 2016 where we could see five or six miles out to the shipping channel. Um, and, you know, you can see the ships going by. And I've always kind of been curious about how things work, uh, why this happens. 
Um, <clears throat> and I noticed that there weren't any, you know, the ship spotting, ship watching groups um, for Baltimore. They were in Savannah and New York and Delaware and several other places, but there wasn't one for Baltimore. So uh, I had run Facebook groups before um, and they, I knew they were a lot of work. So I lost some sleep and thought about it for two weeks before I even started it because I knew once it got going, you're, you, you, it's never going to stop. <laughs> How did you go about picking the spot for this camera? Because again, the camera is kind of pointed right there at the bridge, which is a major landmark. So how did you go about picking a spot to put it where it was going to be pointed right there? Well, it was kind of happenstance, if you will. I'd been working uh, with uh, port companies, um, asking them, it's just kind of my personality. I see an opportunity and I don't hesitate to ask about it. Um, so, you know, I started inside the key bridge asking companies if they could, if they could host it. And um, I think once it got to corporate, you know, everybody said, well, we're going to be filming everybody else's activities. No, we can't be a part of that. Um, so, after about three years, I just, again, just my personality, I casually threw it over <laughs> to a friend, you know, at a, at a function and said, Hey, would you be willing to put a camera on the back of your house? <laughs> and, and that's basically it because I knew where he lived. I knew the view that he had. He's about two miles closer to the bridge than I am. And you have cameras, I guess, all over that area, right? That are pointed at different areas where you can watch ships. Uh, no, I don't. Um, I only know of this one in this area. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is a webcam that's on top of a building that pans around that you can find on Google downtown Baltimore. Uh, but this is the only one that I know of that's public. Um, and then Streamtime Live, the people that we partnered with, the company that paid for hosts, incurs all the costs, owns the video, um, they have port cameras. So if you go to there, go to find them on socials, mm -hmm. uh, Streamtime Live, they have several, uh, 10 cameras um, in several different places. I think that's what I was thinking of is, is stream time live there. Thank you again, right. Mike Singer, for taking the time of, uh, to be here with us today and kind of talk a little bit more about the key bridge and, and the memories there. Is there anything else you want to add about any of this before I let you go? Um, obviously, the lives lost are, are uh, tragic. I can't imagine what those, um, <clears throat> what those people are going through. Um, but just another group, the first responders, and then the captain and the pilots that were on the boat. You know, what are, what are the on the ship? What what are the, what are they going through? Um, you know, certainly a lot to think about. All right. Well, thank you again for for taking the time to be here with us. We appreciate it. You're welcome. And this right here is a current uh, stream time live image. You can actually see it's pointed at the ship that is still there. And as I mentioned, will be there for several weeks at this point. The pieces of the bridge still sitting atop it as the NTSB does work their investigation. I do want to go over some of the basics here. The latest information that we do know, if you are just joining us here at 849, on the East Coast and 549 on the West Coast, two bodies recovered after a cargo ship slammed into that bridge early Tuesday morning. It happened around 1.30 a.m. local time and four other people also presumed dead. All of them are construction workers and they were working on the bridge at the time of that collision. Federal investigators looking to see whether contaminated fuel may have played a role in the ship losing power before then crashing into the bridge. The ship does remain stuck on a pillar on the bridge, and officials say it could remain there, as I mentioned, for several weeks. The Coast Guard saying the lights on the ship called Dolly began to flicker about an hour into the ship's trip, and a pilot and assistant reported issues prior to that collision. Two victims found have now been identified by officials. They are 35-year-old Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes and 26-year-old Dorlian Ronial Castillo Cabrera. The bodies found inside a red pickup.